Chapter 21 The Prophets I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Ever closer to people their reckoning comes, but they turn away and ignore, they pay no heed, and when any fresh revelation comes to them, they treat it as an amusement indeed. They only pay attention with frivolous hearts, and the evil ones whisper amongst themselves, Is this man Muhammad anything more? than a mere mortal like everyone else. Are you going to fall under his spell when you believe it is simply magical lies? Say, Muhammad, my Lord knows all that is said in the heavens and earth. He is all hearing, all knowing, all wise. Some disbelievers say the Quran is muddled dreams, and others say he fabricated it, and others add, let him bring a sign like previous messengers, this man is simply a poet. But many previous communities who were sent signs were punished, they did not believe. Did these people believe when given signs? No, they refused to take heed. And before your time, Muhammad, no messenger was an angel, they were simply inspired men. And if you disbelievers do not know of this, then go to those with previous scripture and ask them. The previous messengers had mortal bodies, they could not do without drink or food. We fulfilled our promise to them saved those we wished to save, and destroyed the transgressors for whom punishment was due. And now we sent you people a scripture, a reminder of mankind's rank and dignity. Will you not use your reason and reflect, consider how we have destroyed each sinful community, and consider too how many other communities we have raised in their place, and see when they saw our might coming, how they tried to escape. But the angels told them, do not try to run, go back to the homes and excess you reveled in. Go back and wait until you are questioned about your sins and your transgression. They said, woe to us, we were wrong, and their cry was a permanent wail, and it did not cease until the time when we had made them burnt off stubble. We did not create the heavens and earth and all between for play. If we had wished for such a thing, we had it in us if we had wished for it to be that way. No, we hurl the truth against falsehood, and the truth obliterates it indeed. See how falsehood vanishes away. Woe to the way they describe God through their disbelief. Everything in the heavens and earth belongs to him, and those who worship him humbly, they are not too proud to do so, nor do they in their worship become weary. Such is the way the angels worship. They glorify him night and day. He is the one true Lord, the ever-merciful, the Almighty, the one worthy of all praise. Have the disbelievers chosen other gods from the earth who can give life to the dead? No, indeed, they cannot do so, but the disbelievers worship gold and silver instead. If there were any other gods in the heaven and earth, heaven and earth would be ruined indeed, as each god would fight with the others trying to get their way, trying to reign supreme. God is the Lord of the throne. He is far above the things the disbelievers say. They will all be called to account by him, but he cannot be brought to account in any way. Have the disbelievers chosen to worship other gods? Say, bring proof of what you claim. This Quran is a reminder for those with me and those who before me came. But most people do not recognize the truth in it, so they pay it no heed. We never sent a messenger without revealing. There is no God, but God, serve me. The disbelievers say God has taken offspring for himself, claiming the angels are his children. No, they are his honoured servants. They do not speak before he has given them permission. And they only act by his command. He knows what is before and behind them. They cannot intercede without his permission. They themselves stand in awe of him. If any were to claim I am God beside him, they would be punished like Pharaoh's people in this life and the next as well. This is how we reward the evildoers. Their reward for such action would be hell. Are the disbelievers not aware? The heavens and earth were one piece that we pulled apart indeed, and we made all living things from water. Will they still persist in their disbelief? And we put firm mountains on the earth, securing it from swaying under them and set for them ravines as roads, so they can safely head in the right direction. 
and we made the sky a secure canopy, yet from its wonders they turn away. It is he who created the sun and the moon to float in their orbit, and he who created night and day. Prophet, nor you or any who have come before have been given immortality in this life. So do the disbelievers who claim they'll have peace when you pass not believe that they too will die. Do they think they will live forever? No, each soul is certain to taste death indeed. We test you through all the bad and the good, and then you are all returned to me. Prophet, when the disbelievers see you they mock you to one another, saying, It is he who leads you astray, telling you to leave your idols, and they cast reminders of the Lord of mercy away. Man was created hasty, I will show you my signs of chastisement soon, so do not ask me to hasten them. Closer and closer my punishment looms. The disbelievers mock, when will this promise be fulfilled, if what you say is true? But a time will come when they can't ward the fire from their backs and faces, if only the disbelievers knew. They will get no help at all, the punishment will come suddenly and stupefy them. They'll not be able to push it away or be reprieved they will be condemned. Muhammad, disbelievers also mocked messengers before you, but what they mocked brought their demise, and ask, who could protect you night and day from the Lord of mercy, the all-knowing, the wise? Yet they turn away when their Lord is mentioned, have they other gods to protect against me? Their gods can't even protect themselves, nor from us will they find any safety. We have allowed the sinners and their forefathers to enjoy life for a long time, but they see their land is diminishing as it is overtaken victoriously by this prophet of mine. Do they think they are the ones who will prevail? No, my prophet and his companions will succeed. Say, prophet, I only warn you through revelation. Before it is too late, take heed. The deaf will not hear the warning call. But if a breath of God's punishment touches them, they'll cry, Woe to us, we were wrong, and then beg for a chance to be returned to earth and do right. We have set up scales of justice for the day of resurrection. None will be wronged in any way, and whatever deeds there may be, however small, we shall count them. We take the best account in every way. We gave Moses and Aaron the scripture that differentiates right from wrong, a light so clear and a reminder. For those mindful of God, those who say to him we belong. They are the ones who stand in awe of their Lord, though he's unseen, and they fear the hour will come. And this Quran too is another blessed message we have sent, so will you deny what has come from the merciful one. And we blessed Abraham with right guidance, before he came of age. He said to his father and people, What are these idols that you worship night and day? They said, we found our forefathers worshipping them. He said, you and your forefathers are astray. And they said, are you simply mocking us? Is there any truth in what you say? He said, your true Lord is the Lord and creator of the heavens and earth, and I am witness to this. And to himself he said, I swear by God I will plot against your idols behind your backs and smash them to pieces. And so on the festival day when all the others had gone, Abraham went to where the idols were kept and with a hatchet broke them all to bits except the largest idol, and then tied the hatchet to the largest idol's neck. And when the people returned from their festival, they were shocked by what they did see, saying, Who could have done this to our gods? How wicked a person they must be. And some said, We heard a youth talking ill of them. Abraham was his name. So the leaders said, Bring him to court to testify, in light of our people's claims. And they asked, Abraham, did you destroy our idols? Was it you who attacked them? And he said, no, it was the large idol who did it. Why don't you just ask him? They thought him guilty but said, you know our gods cannot speak. So Abraham exclaimed, then how can you worship what cannot benefit or harm you in any way? Shame on you for what you worship instead of God. Have you no ounce of sense? And so Nimrod, the disbeliever's leader, urged his people to seek revenge. He said, take this man and avenge your gods, by throwing him into a fire we'll make. And so the people gathered all that they could that would burn in the coming days. And they put Abraham in a catapult, and then they flung him towards the flames. 
but we said to the fire, Be cool and safe for Abraham. So he landed in it, but he was safe. His people had planned to harm him, but they were true losers for what they sought, and we sent Abraham to the land we blessed for people, along with his cousin Lot. And we gave him Isaac and Jacob as an extra gift, and made each one righteous indeed, and made them all leaders by our command, guiding others from disbelief. And we inspired them to do good works, to keep up the prayer and give set arms. They were true worshippers indeed. We kept Lot from his disbelieving community's harm. We gave him sound judgment and wisdom. It was his people who broke God's law. We admitted him to our mercy. He was a righteous man. And long before that we answered Noah. We answered him when he cried to us and saved him and his family from the great calamity and helped him against those who rejected our signs and evil people who we drowned suddenly. And remember David and Solomon who gave judgment regarding the field and the grazing sheep. The sheep would graze in a neighbor's field and destroy the crops the neighbor wished to reap. And David said the head of the sheep should be given to the neighbor, but Solomon disagreed, saying that the sheep should be given only when the state of the crops had been remedied. The sheep owner should tend to the crops, and when they are fully bloomed again, the owner of the crops should return the sheep, but may benefit from its wool and milk until then. We made Solomon understand this case better, but gave judgment and knowledge to both of them, and we made the name of David celebrated by the birds and by the mountains. We taught him how to make coats of mail to benefit people, to protect them in their war, but are you people grateful for this, in any shape or form at all? For Solomon we harnessed the power of the wind, so it sped to the land we'd blessed, and made some jinn subservient to him, to dive and do other works at his request. We were watching over them, we have knowledge of all things, we made all of these things happen, indeed we truly blessed him. Remember Job when he cried out to his Lord, suffering has truly afflicted me, but you are the most merciful of the merciful, you are truly the Lord of mercy. We answered him, removing his suffering, restored his family to him, along with others who were the same, as an act of grace, a reminder to the believing. And remember Ishmael, Idris and Dulchifl, they all held firm and were steadfast, we admitted them to our mercy, they were truly righteous servants. And remember Jonah, before his ordeal, in the whale, he left his people and stormed off angrily, leaving the preaching we had commanded of him, and he acted arrogantly. He thought we had no power over him, but he was thrown off the ship he had run to. We were swallowed by the whale, and only then in its belly did he see he had no one else to turn to. He said, There is no God but you, O Lord. I was wrong. Glory be to you. We answered him and saved him from distress. This is how we save the faithful. Remember Zachariah, when he cried, Lord, don't leave me childless. Of inheritors you are the best, as you alone will endure. When everything perishes, you alone are left. We answered him made his wife give birth to John, that family raced to do good deeds, they called on us with longing and awe, and put themselves before us humbly. Remember Mary who remained chaste, we gave her from Gabriel our spirit, he breathed into her, we made her son a sign for all people, a human birth where contact between mother and father did not occur. This community should act and adhere as one, I am your Lord, so serve me. Others have divided themselves into sects, they have torn apart their unity. But all in the end will return to us, those who believe and do good will have their deeds accepted, and no community we destroyed can escape its return, on the day all people are resurrected. And when the people of Gog and Magog are let loose, and over every highland they swarm, and the true promise draws near, the disbelievers will stare in terror knowing that they were warned. They'll say, woe to us, we ignored this day. We were wrong in what we believed. You disbelievers and the idols you worship will be no more than fuel for the fire indeed. That is surely the place you'll stay in, pitifully groaning. If your idols had any power, it would not be so. But the idols were false. They'll disown all your actions. Hell is the place you'll surely go. And as for those for whom paradise is decreed, they'll be kept far from hell. 
they will not hear a murmur from it, and all their souls will rejoice as well. They will have no fear of the great terror. When the angels take them, they will say, Today is the day of which you were promised. Today is judgment day. And on that day we shall roll up the skies, just as a writer rolls up his scrolls, and produce creation again as we produced it the first time. This is our promise. We will certainly manifest all that we've told. We wrote in the Psalms of David, as we did in the Torah that came before, the righteous will inherit paradise, and this is a message for the servants of God whose faith is secure. And it was only as a mercy we sent you to all people, prophet, so too the people say, it has been revealed to me your God is one God, will you submit to him and accept faith? And if they turn away, say, I have told you the message and brought it fairly to you, I know not whether the judgment is near or far, but God knows what you reveal and what you conceal too. I do not know if this time is just a test for you. It may be a brief enjoyment for a time. Say, my Lord, pass the true judgment. To you is the return, and you are the originator of life. And say, our Lord is the Lord of mercy. We seek his assistance against what the disbelievers say. O Lord, we seek your protection and help and yearn for your mercy on Judgment Day.